Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Every one of us is on an adventure. Uh, in the last few months, my wife and I watched every one of the Hobbit uh, shows. I think there were six of them all together. And uh, we learned by watching that that all of us are on an adventure. And, uh, and there is no greater adventure. There is no greater journey uh, than abandoning ourselves to God's will. That's what the, our ministry is all about. Our creed is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. We'll be right back with our guest, Jeff Cavins. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, I want to let you know something. You know, sometimes we're, we get kind of tongue twisted and we're not sure what to say. We want to be evangelists, but we're not apologists. We're not apologists. Uh, we know our faith, but we don't know how to necessarily share our faith. Jesus didn't send us out to be apologists. He didn't send us out to be uh, instructors in the faith. For the most of us, he sent us out to be witnesses. And we all have that witness in our heart of knowing Jesus Christ. If you're a Catholic, you re, you're living the sacramental journey, you can just say, hey, I know he's real. He's in my heart. He's in my life. And I want to invite you to, to get closer to the Lord. I know my dad, when we both, when we, the whole family kind of came to the, this uh, charismatic experience at the same time years ago in the 70s, someone said, well, God wants you to be a witness. And he's like, well, am I going to see a car accident or something or what's going on? No, just share your share what you're experiencing. And why I love Jeff Cavins is the one thing I think about when I think about Jeff Cavins is his basic message is God loves you and has a beautiful plan for your life. God loves you and has a beautiful plan for your life. And how do I know this? Because I know him. I'm a witness. I've seen God work in people's lives. But we're inviting Jeff Cavins on our show. I always try to get him on my show whenever we're doing a we do a round of recording because I just dig him. He's a biker. He, uh, he, he loves the scriptures, he loves the Lord, and he's an evangelist. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's so good to be with you. And we haven't talked for a while, have we? Yeah, I know. I have, you know, we, The last time I think we saw each other, I was at your remote cabin in the remotest place in, in Minnesota. Is that where you are today, by the way? I am. I'm in Minneapolis, and uh, Minneapolis has been a very interesting place to be over the last... Uh, year with all that's gone on here. I am right now about 12 miles from where George Floyd died. And then the uh, the shooting that took place during the trial is about three miles from my house. Oh my and so this has been sort of the epicenter of social unrest and uh, challenges to to be a, a Christian in the modern era. It is It is interesting how I remember when I was young, Jeff, people would say, well, are you a Christian? You'd say, well, I'm an American. You know, it was like, <laughs> if, you're an Amer if you're American, you're a Christian. You know, it kind of goes hand in hand. And I just remember over time how that gradually uh, changed and to where now people think of Christians, say you're a Christian, and uh, so many people uh, have angst and anger towards Christians. And, and you have to ask yourself why. why. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that... Uh people probably associate Christians with being conservative. And uh, there's obviously a, an ideological battle going on between conservative and liberal and uh, the old guard, so to speak, and uh, the new America that's trying to be forged by those who have felt that, uh, that life wasn't fair to them. And so when they hear the word Christian, they automatically, I think, they think conservative and and they probably tie Christian to Trump, you know, and uh, they come to their own conclusions as to what you uh, stand for. And if you get in the way, you just might be canceled. So, right. Yeah, that's right. Um, no, I, I but I've seen this gradual progression. Uh, there's an angst uh, because we believe that there's a moral absolute, you know, and because, we, you know, the other thing is we believe in a very personal God. We he, do. He gets personal with you, and uh, people who want to kind of run their own, go their own way, 
the Bible says, you know, we're kind of born with a conscience, but as we more and more go against that conscience, we're kind of given over to a reprobate mind. And, mm-hmm. uh, and that voice gets more and more. We silence that voice purposefully more and more. And so we get to the point where we want to be atheistic because we don't want there to be a God to tell us what to do. You're opening right. the scripture. Nope. Tell me where you're <laughs> turning to. Are you using I'm, I'm, this? I, are you using this great Bible that I have with me? The Great Adventure Bible. I've got. You know what, <laughs> Bear? I've got so many Bibles around here. I just realized as we were starting that I had a Bible downstairs that I wanted to use, and I thought, oh well, I've got my Great Adventure Bible. Yeah, and I'm I've got up to. <laughs> and I've got another Bible, and you know, I've, and, worn, uh, I've for, worn out so many Bibles that I needed a new one. And uh-huh. I love your Bible. It was number one in the world. I don't know if it still is, but I love the Great Adventure by Ascension Press. But we better go on to the scripture you were going to share. But I love yeah, this Bible. Well, it feels like it's right, mine. It is. It, it's a good color, too. Yeah. You know, right as, right as you were talking about that, uh, the, the scripture came to mind in Habakkuk, mm. which during Habakkuk's day, it was, uh, it was very similar to today. There was a conflict of ideologies. And, and Habakkuk said something so powerful. He said, why do you make me... Uh, see wrongs and look upon trouble. Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth for the wicked surround the righteous. So justice goes forth perverted. Well, that's and the that's, social justice warrior right there, Jeff. Yeah. And, and that's what happens, you know, that if uh, the people of God allow the unrighteous, and I'm not going to name names or anything like that, but if the, if the righteous are surrounded by the unrighteous and the law becomes paralyzed, mm-hmm. then the justice, the so-called justice that goes forth is going to be perverted. And, and, uh, the, and that's the big danger that we face today is, will the new justice be perverted because the law is paralyzed, not only the civil law, but but the law of God be paralyzed in our life, ineffective in our life. And well, you know, that's sorry, that's ahead. what what's going on. That's the battle. Well, you know, Aristotle and Confucius both, I think, they propounded the the rule that says, "Don't do unto someone else that you wouldn't have them do to you." And then Jesus mm-hmm. said something more. He said, "Do unto others what you would have them do unto you." So he took it a step further to do good to others. And it, it's Christianity that really brought that concept to the world uh, mm-hmm. to do good. And, uh, and so the, the world has taken the Christian teaching, Jesus' teaching, and twisted it. You know, uh, it, for example, in the area of abortion, it just seems so right to say, well, we don't want this poor girl who's been betrayed and, and abandoned, who's become pregnant, uh, to, be, to not have a good life, so let's kill the baby in her. It's, it's like a twisted, it's a twisted, perverted sort of justice. Do you, do you know what I'm, am I saying that very absolutely. well? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it, you know, you get to a point, in, and Paul wrote about this in Romans, where um, the, uh, ho- good, the good, be- is, uh, the bad becomes good and the good becomes bad, yeah. you know, and, and that you're in a dangerous position when you, when you are living a life that is bad, sinful, unrighteous, but somehow you have convinced yourself that it is actually good. You know, and a good example of that is, um, is, a, is a guy, let's say a guy is married and then he starts to have an adulterous affair on the side and then he feels that he loves that other woman and then he justifies it by, but it just feels so right. And so now he says that the, the evil is good and the good is evil. God doesn't want me to go back to my wife. He wants me to go to the one that I feel good with. It's completely backwards. And that's when you know you're trapped. You are trapped at that point. You know, I remember that scripture verse in my youth, Jeff. You, you and I both, I think, experienced the Lord. I think I was 19. You were really young, too, when you had your I was conversion. 18, yeah. Yeah. And I remember reading that scripture and going, well, that's interesting. That's an end times type of scripture, I guess, when people call the good bad and the bad good. Mm-hmm. But we've seen it turn full 180 degrees, and that's mm-hmm. what we see now. Everything that we would say is is not good is being called good, and evil evil is called good, and good is called evil. We've seen that place. But I, I yeah. love Habakkuk, and I don't know anybody that I've ever talked to that has ever quoted him. But I love <laughs> one of the verses in there 
And I think it's appropriate for right now, too, where it says, uh, write the vision down in letters big enough so that the one who's reading it can run while he's reading. In other words, it's a proclamation. It's, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a messenger running from city to city like Paul Revere, you know, saying the British are coming. And we can say that God has given us a vision. And then he says this, if the vision tarries, wait for it. For it will surely come. So Christians, we need to hold on to hope. And more than that, we need to be bold in our love for the Lord and our standing for uh, standing with the Lord. We're talking with Jeff Cavins. We've got to take a break, Jeff. But where's the best way for them to find you? Uh, the best way to find me really is just jeffcavins.com. That has all the information about speaking, pilgrimages, everything that is going on. And then most of my uh, quote unquote products, you know, Bible studies and things. Those are uh, at ascensionpress.com. We love them, man. We love you and we love them. Uh, and you. you can find us at the Bear Wozniak Advent at, at deepadventure.com. We'll be, isn't it funny, Jeff, how your your focus is the great adventure and mine is the deep adventure? It's just so interesting how that, how that yeah, happened. We're both, we're both guys that were looking for an adventure in uh, life. We'll talk, let's talk a little bit about that when we come back. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up. Grit. Grit. That is true grit. It's one of my favorite terms. It's a word I use a fair amount in my forthcoming post-Civil War Western novel, Revenge and Redemption. Whether you got calluses or not doesn't determine a man or a woman of true grit. You can be a preacher or an office manager and have true grit. True grit comes from, well, gritting your teeth in tough conditions and then keeping your gear in action. A man or a woman with true grit just doesn't have quit. Doesn't mean there's no fear involved, nor the shaking of hands or knees. I've had to grit things out in terrifying conditions. No doubt, so have you. Jesus walked willingly to the cross of crucifixion, all the while sweating drops of blood and fighting depression but he got her done. That's what counts. Dr. Luke in his gospel wrote that Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Jesus was determined to realize his destiny through the cross. Dang, that sure is true grit. The apostle Paul had one tough haul in bringing the gospel to the Roman Empire, writing, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. He had that keeping on, keeping on deal. Man or woman's got to know what's worth standing for and then standing for it no matter what the opposition, mistakes, setbacks, or number of battles lost during the war. It ain't over till it's over, partner. You'll be known less of a man or woman when needing true grit if you call out to the Lord for his courage and his faith and his power. Jesus did. Paul did. I do. Shoot, I do it nearly every day. True grit. Get it? Got it? Good. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua.
This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, there's this group of women, we call them the mama bears. Uh, Jeff Cavins is our guest. He's out in the remote part of the world in his remote cabin where I'm sure from time to time you've seen a bear up there in Minnesota. And I've, up in Montana, I've seen grizzlies. I've seen twice grizzly, a mama bear grizzlies with their cubs. And mm -hmm. so when we talk about the mama bears, Jeff, in our ministry, we don't think of the warm, cuddly mama bear. We think... <laughs> of those fears. Uh, my son Jeremiah came in the day after the Lord, I feel, spoke to me the word mama bears. He, Jeremiah came in the next morning and goes, hey, Dad, remember those mama bears in Montana, how dangerous they were? And so it was like the Lord confirmed to us that this special kind of connection with our mama bears, that these mama bears, we love you and we appreciate you. And there's no one more fierce or more protective of their family, of their ohana, then a mama bear, your rosaries. We, we love it when we come into Mass. And so often, mama bears, you're there by yourself. You're wearing a wedding ring. You're married. You're there by yourself, and you're there early, and you're praying the rosary. And we're standing with you. And don't give up. The rosary is the most powerful weapon you can have in your prayer life. And we appreciate you standing with us. If you go to deepadventure.com, we have a special place for you there with our ministry. In oh, I should say including when you join up, become a mom bear, you get, you get the coffee mug more roar in every pour. But, but guess what? Someone gave us these mama bear motorcycle, Catholic motorcycle little teddy bears, and we're giving them away until they run out uh, to our mama bears. But we're, we're, so go to deepadventure.com, find out all about that. We love you, mama bears. Jeff Cavins. So what about that? I, is there hope? What, what should the Catholic's res uh, Christian's response be? during this time when people call good evil and evil good and there's not just they don't just call it that there's an angst there's an anger there's a terror there's a cancel culture out there right well i i, <clears throat> I think a, a number of things uh, one is that we should not be surprised at what is going on around us this is what the world does when they don't know jesus uh when people don't know god they they um they do what is right in their own eyes and they set themselves up as a king or a queen and establish law and and it typically will end up in a disaster you know for them and unfortunately we're in the world and it affects us as well and so don't be surprised at what is going on around you the second thing would be uh don't spend your time just listening to that you know, I'm sure you've got this too, Bear, where uh, you're getting email from every direction about conspiracies and what they're doing here and the COVID that and and the government this and this and that. And after a while, your head spins because of all the noise that is going on. And I, I do think that it reminds me of Ezra and Nehemiah when they came back and rebuilt the walls around Jerusalem. And the people uh, that didn't want them to build those walls said, hey, we'll help you. And why don't you come on down and talk? And they said, no, we can't come down and talk. We, we've got a job to do here. And so that leads me to my third point, which is we are members of the kingdom of God. Amen. And the catechism says in the very first paragraph that uh, God has a plan of sheer goodness. And so we as Catholics have a choice. Do you want to get involved in all of the skirmishes and the, the rhetoric and the gossip of the world? Or do you want to be a part of this, this uh, plan of sheer goodness, this adventure that is really the answer to the world's problems? And then fourth, I would say, we've got to stick to our message. And the message is, as you know, you, you and I've talked about it many times, the kerygma. And that is, God loves you and has an amazing plan for your life. Sin has screwed up the plan. Jesus has died for us. Now he wants you to radically reorient your life to him. That's our message. And the Holy Spirit confirms that message 
So the more time you spend just gossiping and talking about all these things going on in the world, the less time you have given to what you are really called to as a disciple, as an activated disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in, in, in a, a synopsis of all that, I would say we've got to stay focused and we have to have courage and we have to go forth with this message in our mouth as a polished arrow in the quiver Amen. of the Lord, ready for battle, ready to, to, to take on all the things that, that come our way. That's awesome, Jeff. You know, the, the word for sin in both Greek and in the, in the Hebrew is, is, is an archery term, missing the mark. Yeah, and you miss the mark because if your focus is wrong. And if your mm -hmm. focus is on, is on Satan and all the garbage that's going on, you're going to turn that way. When I was riding my bicycle, you know when you're on a motorcycle and they say there's a semi-truck coming on, on your side, don't look at mm -hmm. it or you're going to turn into it, right? Yep. Basic yep. rule yep. Of, of motorcycling. You know, surfing, when I've got a woman in a lift, I can actually feel her um, eyes looking to the right or the left. I can feel her eyes because it brings her out of balance. And I'll say, look up or look at your certain mark. And we have to keep our focus on the Lord. And, you know, in a deliverance situation, um, pray, pray, in, in, you know, when, it, when a demon first manifests in a deliverance situation, they like to have a lot of attention. They look at me, look at me, look at me. It's almost porn for, for spiritual people. Oh, there's the devil. I can see the devil. Look at the devil. Look what the devil's doing. And it's all, it's all about me, 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 me. Look at me. Let me scare you. Let me excite you. Let me get you focused on me. But the key always in a deliverance or in any spiritual battle is keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your focus on the Lord. If you're an arrow in God's quiver, keep your eyes on the target, not on the battle that goes around you. Remember, the scripture verse that says, my, my, the Lord prepares a table for me in the midst of the enemy. When all this battle's going around, around, become that sacramental Christian. Go to the Lord. Keep your focus on him. Get your marching orders from him. And, and as Paul said, whatever is excellent, whatever is good, Think on these things. You don't, and believe me, they were going through a battle in that time too. Right. You can focus on the Lord, and don't give Satan glory. My mom would say that again and again and again. Don't, don't give Satan glory. You don't have to talk about all the evil in the world. Talk about the right. good. Focus on the well, good. That, you know that scripture that you quoted there, uh, Philippians four eight, is a real good guide. Think on these things. Um, I would venture to say, Bear, that if uh, if Jesus were with our our, our brothers and sisters who are watching this show, if he were with you in the flesh, you would not every few minutes be saying to him, did you see that tweet? Did you see that on Instagram? I, Epic News has this going and on and on. Jesus would look at you like, stick to the good news. Stick Praise to God. the good <laughs> news. And what is the good news again? Will you tell us, Jeff? Remind us. Yeah, the good news is, and every Catholic should know this, it should, it should be in the pores of your being. And, and it's a very simple message that we see eight times in the book of Acts. It's called the kerygma, K-E-R-Y-G-M-A, kerygma, and it means the proclamation. What are we to proclaim to the world? We don't proclaim to the world that God will make you comfortable. We don't proclaim to the world that Jesus is one of many really good teachers. We don't proclaim to the world that come to our church, we have a phenomenal bingo night on Saturday. Our, our message is that, that God loves you. Now, right away, people are going to say, well, it's just so simple. I don't know if our age will take that. It's so simple. And I remember, you know, one time when I was speaking about the kerygma, uh, I was in Canada and I, I gave the kerygma, which I'll give you in a moment. And well the, well, the kerygma is God loves you and has an amazing plan for your life. Sin has disrupted this. Jesus has died for you. Uh, he now wants us to radically reorient our lives to him and then... Uh, he wants us to be baptized, receive the power of the Holy Spirit, join his amazing family, the church. Okay, so I, I taught that, and these two guys come up to me and they said, Mr. Cavins, we love that message. Yay. <laughs> but we just don't know if that will fly in today's society. Oh, my God. They said, is there another way to put it? And I looked at them, Bear, and I kind of <laughs> toyed with them a little bit. I looked at them. I said, just a minute. Let me think. Let me think. And I thought for about 30 seconds, and I said, No. No, there is not a better way to put it. I said, let's do this, guys. I'll give you five minutes on each point. You two put your heads together and come up with something better. Let's start with the first one. God loves you 
and has an amazing plan for your life. I said, <laughs> go, you got five minutes. And they kind of looked at each other and I, I toyed with them by looking away. And then I, I looked back at them and they went, I don't think I can improve on that. I said, exactly. Let's go to the second one. Sin has royally screwed up our lives and our marriages and our families and our, our minds, everything. Come up with something better than that. And they, uh, well, I don't think so. Okay, let's go on to the third one. Jesus loves you so much he died for you. Top that. And they said, okay, we get it. We, I don't think we can top it. And I said, you can't because that's the message. And get this, the kicker is that the Holy Spirit says three times in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit confirmed the message. Amen, yeah. And so we have got to get out of the rut and we got to put our big boy pants on and go out there and start to proclaim the truth because the Holy Spirit will work with us and do a work on people's hearts and lives change. We dilly dally around all the time with, well, we'll just invite them to this or that. And maybe they'll like us. Come on. We've and got a battle before us. Let's, let's go there with love, tenacity, and tell people the truth and let's stick with them and help nurture them when they receive Christ. And it's not up to you. You just you just start you just be there, feel the Holy Spirit's nudge or maybe you don't and you think you do. But go anyway, speak the word and the Holy Spirit does the job. We're talking with Jeff Cavins. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be right back with more. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki with a deep adventure moment. You know, one of my closest friends, great surfer by the way, Gerard Middleton, loves the Lord, was raised by a mother and father that he deeply loves, especially his father, they did so much together. But you know, these weren't his biological parents, he was adopted. And just a couple months ago he discovered and got to meet his biological mother and found out who his father was who had recently passed away. But you know, he loves his parents. In Hawaii, when you're adopted, the word that's used is hanai. You are hanai'd into the family. I actually live on Queen Lilio Kalani's estate. My house is built on her estate. She was not a biological child of the Kamehameha lineage. She was hanai'd into that family. And when she was Hanai'd in, in a lot of ways, when you're a Hanai child, you're actually in a lot of ways considered more special or more important because you didn't happen, you were chosen to come into that family. Well, Jesus says, the Bible says, that we have been given the spirit of adoption, wherewith we cry out, Abba, Father. When I'm in Israel, I hear the little children call their, their father, Abba, Abba. And when the disciples said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. He said, pray like this, our Father. Our Father in heaven, He's a loving God. He isn't an angry God that you need to appease. He's a loving God that you want to please. He wants to grab you and take you on adventures. He wants to see you expand your horizons and explore uh, new possibilities. Your Father has made you part of the royal family. With the power and the blessings that come with that, you can pray and you can see miraculous things happen. Welcome to the family of God. You are Hanai. This is Bear Wozniak with DeepAdventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. 
Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men, and you women might want to nudge your men, to join Bear's Man Cave. We're a group of basically knuckle-dragging uh, misfits, like the men that were drawn to David's cave, uh, the cave of Adullam, where people who owed money or people who were on the run from the law or maybe on the run from their mother-in-law, a bunch of misfits showed up in this cave and God formed them and they formed each other and God formed them into the mighty men of valor. And that's what Bear's Man Cave is. You can go to deepadventure.com and you see a little button there. Join the cave. It's a secret Facebook group. You can't join it by going through Facebook. But we're, we have Zoom video chats twice a month and uh, the men challenge and share with each other all through the the day on that website. So we invite you to go to deepadventure.com and join the, the man cave. Jeff, you know, I was reading... Um, scriptures the other day and there's a scripture verse that just jumped out at me where it said that people saw the voice of the Lord didn't hear they saw in other words the, the word was spoken and they their eyes were open and when you share the word of the Lord when you share God's love with someone the Holy Spirit is there with you and he, he opens their eyes and it's not it's true that as we study the catechism, when we go deeper and deeper with the Lord, but our, our, fir- our first step is just to say, I've got good, good news for you. I know, I know Jesus, and he loves you. And all this is not going to ne- necessarily be easy, but all this, this, uh, these knots that are tying you up, the Lord will deal with one at a time, and, and he, he has a beautiful plan for your life. Well, we're afraid of people. You know, we're afraid of our own, per, or our, you know, what are they going to think about me, and will I lose my place in society? Will they think yes. I'm nuts? Will they ever call me back? You know, all of that. You know, in the Twin Cities here, there was a, recently, uh, there was a, um, an owner of a business, and that everybody in the Twin Cities knows this business. And uh, this person was outwardly living a very contrary lifestyle. And everybody who knew this person knew that. And uh, about uh, two months ago, somebody came up to this person and said, God loves you. And God really has an amazing plan for your life. And shared with this person the message of the gospel. And there was a radical transformation that took place in that person's life. And they went public and said, I am now serving Jesus Christ and I'm going to live a chaste life. That's what happens when people hear the truth. That's, that is what happens. And, uh, and one of the things, uh, Bear, that I have felt so strong about in the last several years, and I think I told you on one of the motorcycle trips, is that when you, when you have a church of 3,500 families and you go to the Easter vigil and three people are coming into the church. Two are marrying in, one read a Scott Hahn book. When, when that happens, we call that church growth. And, and if you, you really analyze it, you realize we've got a major problem here. And that is we don't know how to make spiritual babies. And, 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 and if we have 3,500 families and three people came into our church, yay for the three, but it reflects a real problem with understanding the gospel, understanding our role in sharing that gospel, and getting out there and interfacing with the world. We the, bear, we have a big problem that we need to solve in teaching people how I to can, be soul winners. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, Jeff, it starts with the man, um, for, for me anyway, and this, this man cave that I talk about, mm-hmm. The men show up, you know, it, the Catholic way is to come alongside and journey with someone. Right. It isn't to argue them into the kingdom. It's to journey with them. And we call it frangelization or mangelization. But, but uh, you know, the way we tell the men to do it is, you know, barbecue, shot of whiskey and a cigar is a great way to bring people to the Lord. Let them be this person. Join you with a f- Join you and a few of your Catholic friends 
just to be with them. And they're going to notice mm-hmm. something different. It's going to be there's not this talk, this, this derogatory conversation about women. It's not about politics. There's something more virtuous happening here, and it salts their thirst. It makes them thirsty for what you have. Uh, so um, in the man cave, that's what the man cave is, but a lot of our members have, have their own kind of man caves. It may be breakfast. It might be a barbecue once, in a, once a month. I know, I know our good friend uh, Sean in Cal- Calvary, Calgary, Canada, Sean Ryan has the barbecue ministry, you know. So, uh, mm-hmm. so uh, it's, do, that's how you do it. You've you, you got to bring men into the company, men. I mean, we have the That Man Is You program, the Exodus 90 program. There's so many different ways. But we need to have small men's groups. But it doesn't have to be in the church basement. It can be on the back deck on a summer night right. with a cigar. And yeah, I know we, you and I both enjoy our cigars together and, and our shot of whiskey. And it shows them that you can be a real man. You can, just, you can relax. You can, it's okay to be a man here. Uh, but this, there's a higher calling for you. There's a heroic calling that God has for you. For sure. Yeah, God is, God is calling men to be men, not boys. You know, the, the, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I... I acted like a child, but when I'm a man, I'm I'm done with childish ways, as the scripture says, and and it's time to act like an adult and to take on the responsibility of a family and take on the responsibility of of being an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And an ambassador of Jesus Christ, a disciple of Jesus Christ, doesn't spend their adult years playing games. Uh, we are on the cutting edge. And, and, uh, and there's a war. There's a war between good and evil, and lives are at stake. And if lives are at stake, I don't need to be playing video games. I see so many people. Uh, maybe I'm too tough. No, maybe no, I'm dude, too harsh. You know, my new book is going to be, is, I'm, I'm working on it uh, with a publisher, um, 12 Rules of Manliness. I mean, mm-hmm. there's, I gave a, a a Zoom video meeting about th- two weeks ago with young adults, about 50 of them. Mm-hmm. And they wouldn't turn on their camera. The women would, but the men wouldn't turn on their video cameras. Why and is I that? Kept, I, I kept, they're, just, they're, so, they're so passive and they're so unwilling to man up and show themselves. And so I, I challenge you, you guys turn on your camera. It's better, <laughs> better for me as a speaker. I can, I can interact with you. And so mm-hmm. the women, a few of the women, and a few more women than one guy. And then finally, I just told the men, if you're so passive that you can't turn on your camera, get out of here. I don't want to even talk to you. I have nothing to say to you. And they started to click on their cameras. And then I asked the women, what do you think about the passive man who is, um, who is uh, embarrassed or, or um, making excuses that he's a man? And they just told these men, we need real men. Mm-hmm. We need men who will step up that will be that will be powerful, protective, heroic, that will actually ask us out on a date. And maybe after we've dated a while, ask us to marry him. And said, our, he said, she said, these girls said, you know, we've been talking amongst ourselves. And we just finally said, should we just give up and just settle? Wow. And I said, absolutely not. So, yeah, we need men. We need uh, yeah. and we need the uncles, like we say here in Hawaii, anybody that's older than. Ten years older than someone is, they go, hey, Uncle Bear, hey, Uncle Bear, you know, so it's uncle, uncle, uncle. And lately I've been golfing with my son and two of his friends who are in their 40s or 30s. And I just tell him, I'm so proud of you men. You've made a success of your life. You're, you're, you're married. You're having children. You're, you're good men. I just keep reaffirming that and affirming that. You and I, Jeff, have that role to be uncles. In Hawaii, it's a very real thing to uncle the younger men, to affirm them, to challenge them, to give them and to, and to affirm them as men. It's good to be a man. Yeah. You know, there's a principle that men can learn from, and that is that uh, they did a study a long time ago, and I don't have the study at my fingertips, but basically the study revealed that if a father's son, if, if, if your son has a relationship with your friends, in other words, they have had a barbecue. They went hunting. They they spent the weekend together at the cabin. If your son has a relationship with your friends, they stand a far better chance of staying as a Christian and a leader because they're part of almost a tribe of men. But it's when a, when a young boy grows up and has no modeling in his life, Yes, he, he typically goes away from the faith. And so I would encourage men, if you've got sons, 
invite those sons to be friends of your friends and and you'll be surprised at what happens yeah and you know we see that at men's conferences the first thing i do is any any man here that's 30 and under stand up mm-hmm. we're so glad you're here we're here for yeah. you and we're proud of you that you're here and affirming and affirming and affirming and my wife uh, who loves men to be men uh in in hawaii she says i never saw anything like this where there, there there's real men here and they really have a uh, an experience of brotherhood. It's the waterman community, the surfing community, all of that. And then you see the young men with the with the older men, and they're and and like uh, Buffalo Kealana, one of our great noble surfers here, used to have you know coffee with Buffalo every Tuesday morning up on the on the west side. Uh, so there was a there's a real it's not formal, but there's a real mentoring going on. And I remember young men coming up and say, Uncle Bear, I had a trouble with the law. Uncle Bear, I, I need a place to live. Things like that. They know they can go talk to the uncles, and the uncles are there for them. And one time I was sharing with one of my friends, oh, I'm having a, a, fr- a problem with my son, Jeremiah. He badmouthed me. I'm just talking to him. Six months later, my son's surfing Bonsai Pipeline, which is a pretty radical wave. Very dangerous, hollow wave. I've never, I've never surfed on that one. Well, by the yeah. way, <laughs> well, one of my friends was out there. The guy that I had spoken to about this, and he said, he, and "Jeremiah's surfing." He goes, "You go in. You don't get to surf here. Why? Because you badmouth your father." So my, oh. my, my son calls me. Says, "You got to call Lance, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, talk to him about this and clear things up." And I said, "Okay, okay, I'll take care of it." But that's that brotherhood. That's that. That's that. That uh-huh, sense that we great. need to establish uh-huh. that again. We're talking with Jeff Cavins. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach Without your help, you can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we have as, as our guest, Jeff Cavins. He's a biker. He's been, he's, he, first vehicle I ever had was a motorcycle. He's a biker, true and true. One of the, I mean, I think a long motorcycle ride is 500 miles. He and his pack uh, will ride 850 miles or more and then stop and, and, uh, and, and, and Jeff, Jeff will speak at a church. He's number one in my book because I've got his Bible, the, the Great Adventure Bible, when it came out, I don't know if it still is, but the number one Bible selling Bible in the world done by Ascension Press. If you're wanting to know how to dig into Scripture, 
this is the path you go. My wife and I have used it. I've posted this to my man cave to your reading plan. Which I love about your reading plan is that it takes you through the narrative portions of the scriptures, right. and then you can go and dig into some of the other things. So it's kind of a, it's a, it's a it's a it's a historical walk through the Bible, but you don't get detoured on learning all the laws in Leviticus and at least on on this path. And then not on the first not on the first tranche. And then and then what's <laughs> really upsetting is is not only has he got the number one in the Bible, but your podcast with with Father Michael Schmidt is the number was I don't know if it still is, but it's the number one podcast in the world. It outranks. Even Joe Rogan's podcast, right? Tell us what, yeah, what that do you was, think's up with that. Yeah, God is up with that. But uh, yeah, it was very interesting that we were putting together a podcast where we were going to take the Great Adventure methodology and uh, stretch it out for an entire year, where we could cover the entire Bible in one year. And uh, Father Mike was really excited about it. And then uh, I would come in at the beginning of each period and I would kind of as a trail guide coach people of, okay, you're getting ready to go into the, into the, uh, the Royal Kingdom here. Let me tell you what's gonna happen here. And here's a place where you could get lost. And so we, anyway, we, we started putting that together in uh, December <clears throat> and then it launched January 1st. And I think it was January 2nd, our producer called and said, you're number one. And I thought, number one, like in Catholic podcasts? No. Religion? No. Number one of all podcasts. And all of a sudden we thought, whoa, this is incredible. And I went to Apple and looked. Sure enough, we were number one. And a news agency started calling. What's going on here? How'd you guys get to be number one so fast? And, and um, both of us uh, joke about it, saying that if somebody would have told us in, in December, you guys have to put together a podcast that will be number one in the country come the new year we would never have used the format of just reading the Bible. We would have been funny or clever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we, we, we have no answer other than God in the midst of the darkness is drawing people to the light. He's drawing people to the truth. He's drawing people to the plan of sheer goodness and the great adventure. And, uh, and so we're riding the wave in the same way that everybody else is. And this is, uh, uh, this beats the bonsai, this beats uh, Australia. This is the biggest wave I've ever, I've ever ridden. That's the way I see it too. And the thing about it, Jeff, is you can do all the hard work, but it can, you don't make it happen. You, the I, work, can't, I can't create a wave that big, and you're yeah. a great surfer. You can't create a wave that big. The real work is, is our, first of all, our first work is just to love God back. That's mm -hmm. our real work is to serve the Lord, to love God back. Yeah. And then and then to be responsive to the nudge of the Holy Spirit. And then he sends the wave. And, you know, one of the big things about surfers is you paddle out and you wait. Yeah. You wait and you wait and you read mm -hmm. the signs of your times. Oh, the short, the way it's the swells coming up on the north shore. It's going to wrap around to the west side tomorrow. You know where it's breaking. So discern the times, be in scripture. Going through the liturgy of the hours daily it kind of brings you almost always into what's God up to today in your heart or in the world. And then and then just say yes. And then paddle yeah. in with all your yeah. might and let the Lord do well, his that, work. That's exactly what we did, Bear. We were um, preparing this, and uh, it's what we do. It's what we have always done. And so it was another surf day for us. We paddled out. And on January 1st, we were out there just like every other day and waiting for a wave. And we had no idea that the wave of waves was going to hit. <laughs> no idea. No idea whatsoever. And if you had told us that that was going to happen, I don't think we would have been the same. You yeah, know? yeah, it would have been like... Maybe yeah. fearful or something. I don't know. Or too serious. Well, so tell me, I, I suppose there's a name for this podcast. Yeah, it's Bible in a Year. That now, who That's came it. up with that stunning? That stunning. I think Father Mike came up with that, <laughs> or else Sension did. Someone did. I didn't. But. Oh man! <laughs> so I bet it was a, an intern that works months and on that trying to figure out a name. It, it could have been. It might have been one. We have some interns. It might have been one of the producers who said, "Hey, yeah. why don't you just call it Bible Bible in a Year?" Oh no, that's too plain. We got to come up with something like you know, uh, the Year of Explosive Revelation or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's what we do. And now God says, "No, just tell them what it is. The Bible in a Year." Oh, that's All right. beautiful. That's so beautiful. <laughs> and and take take us up, uh, also through. 
uh, the Great Adventure Bible, how it, it covers, how it leads you, because you don't have to start at the beginning of the year. And by the way, the podcast, you can right. go back and listen to the old podcast, and you can just jump in at the beginning of the of the yeah, year. Yeah, wherever you're starting, you're going to end in a year, and uh, we got people starting every day, you know, See, and then we're... Yeah, there you go. And we just what we did with that bear is we just uh, laid it out for the entire year. The Great Adventure Bible is really a, a marvelous tool. It is um, taking the twelve, uh, taking uh, seventy-three uh, books of the Bible. They're not all the same. Uh, if you yeah yes yeah, so the Bible timeline chart. If you if you want to read through the Bible as a narrative, you've got to know how to do it. Because if you start at Genesis and go to Revelation, you're not going to get the story. I'm sorry, it's just not going to happen. You're not going to get it. And so you need someone to guide you, you know, and to lead you. And that's what we do with the great adventure is we divide the Bible up into 12 color coded periods, as you have on that chart. And then we take out of the 73 books of the Bible, we take the 14 books that are narrative. They keep the story moving. And we, uh, we color coded those 12 periods on the edge of the Bible. You can see that maybe, I don't know, but, um, uh, you can look on the side of your Bible and you can see what period you're in of the of the 12. And then after you read those 14 books that take you through the 12 periods, we show you where the other 59 fit in the context of those 12 yeah, periods yeah. in those those 14 books. And so it's it's really simple, yet the biggest question I get, Bear, is how come nobody came up with this before? Well, mo most people and, get started in the Bible and they get to Leviticus and it's like, oh, well. Yeah. Done with that, yeah, and and so so yeah, it's so it's so important, and I love it. Like even in the New Testament, you start at Luke and go th go through Acts. You don't do all of the Gospels because the synoptics are pretty much the same, and you, mm -hmm. you but you you and then once you've done that, then go back through, and you can you you understand. I was I have a book a chronological Bible, which is kind of cool, because of like it 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 re it sorts out the scriptures that are you know kind of chronologically. Like when David wrote the Psalms, where was he at that time in his life, probably, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, invest in, get, let, let the, and don't be afraid of the Old Testament. I think the beauty right. of this is it gets them through that Old Testament story, which I love the Old Testament, love the yeah. stories of the Old Testament. Well, it's so important when we read the Bible, it's so important to put some uh, uh, extra effort into the Old Testament. You know, people ask me all the time, what's the best way in uh, Bible reading to really get to know Jesus? And naturally, we say, well, you read the Gospels, you're going to get to know Jesus. But if you really want to understand what he's saying, you have to know the Old Testament. You have mm, to. Yeah. Um, because, because he's not making stuff up. He's fulfilling everything. He is everything he does. He's fulfilling the Old Testament. And so the person that is really steeped in the Old Testament, if you unleash them on Jesus in the New Testament, it's just like this. They get it. They get it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Down. Jordan River. That's right. 40 days in the wilderness. Oh, okay. All right. I get it. You know? Yeah. Um, but if you just approach Jesus without the Old Testament, you got a lot of figuring out to do. Not to say you can't get something, mm -hmm. because a child can read the New Testament and get a lot. But I'm talking to men here, mainly, that, and, and some women who uh, we would say, uh, don't be afraid of the Old Testament. It's all God revealing himself Great to you. Great story. Great story. So what I love about it is if you were going to write a book, like you're talking about your podcast, I would show King David in a wholly, t totally different light. I wouldn't mm -hmm. show that he had an affair or that he murdered someone. You know, I kind of leave that part out. But it shows that even the, that God can use anybody. That he can take a murderer and an adulterer and, uh, and make, him, make him a king that, that, uh, in, in the lineage of Jesus, you know. Hey, yeah, we got to go. Some of the great Bible characters are murderers. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I know. I was a friend of mine, um, Eric Wardrum, he started the Catholic Cross Bearers Motorcycle Ministry while he was in prison, uh, the priest was coming in hearing confessions, and he would ignore and ignore and ignore. And finally, as the priest was leaving one day, he said, "Hey, Father, I've got, I've got to conf I want to confess." And the priest went to him, and uh, you know Eric, you've probably met him. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he said, "I have something I want to confess." And the father, the priest said, "Well, my son, what is it you want to confess?" And he said, "All the Ten Commandments." And he said, "I, I know I'm just not worthy, but every one of them I broke." And God said, well, you know, Paul was a murderer. David was a murderer and an adulterer. If he can change that life and redeem that life, he can redeem yours. And then he heard his confession. And, uh, and we got to end with that. 
But you know my mother. Right. Used, you know what my mother used to say that Christianity is an elevator religion. And you know what she meant by that is right. you can get on an elevator, and you can by the time you get on and the time you get off, you can say Jesus loves you and has a beautiful plan for your life. And that's exactly. that's, that's the grig. <laughs> Jeff Cavins, thanks for being on our show. Uh, we'll be yeah. back next week with another uh, Bear Wozniak adventure. And again, the best place to find Jeff is just jeffcavins.com. Aloha. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.